Marvel makes and produces a better movie because they had the story. Well, they planned it out. And the whole thing of it is, Marvel makes great comic book movies. DC makes comic book movies grounded in reality where you can't suspend disbelief enough in the DC and the Nolan verse with the with Bane. That's and, a really good point. And it's just like you know, when Marvel That's when really Marvel comes point. around, okay, here's a guy from another planet zipping down here and wanting to destroy humanity and brings aliens from another race to come in so he can rule the world. Whereas Nolan, you're just like, eh, this guy has PTSD. You don't know what's on. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Up. Oh, my you face. actually brought that up. My face. And it's, oh, it hurts. And it's just like, they're <laughs> ground. And don't get me wrong, they're great character studies. Like, Jonathan Crane is a freaking awesome One of villain. the best villains ever. And But they didn't do enough of it. And Carmine Falcone and all the, you know, there's so many great henchmen and B level guys in there. But, you know, like The Dark Knight is like the Marquis de Sade of all the comic book movies that I've ever seen. Because it's stuck to, you know, to a little bit of Dark Knight Returns, a little bit of the Long Halloween, a little bit, you know, yes. it was just nice little sprinkles, little appetizers, little seasonings That's of everything in there. Yeah. So, so maybe DC tends to stick to their, what, what, they, what they have, whereas Marvel knows what they do, but makes a better movie. That's right. a really, you brought up a really cool point, dude. Yeah, and let's, let's cheers to that. Cheers. Let's it's cheers. Empty, but, uh, hey, empty, not empty, 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 empty. Bravo. Let's cheers to that, because that, I mean. Great thing. That was a solid point. point. Oh, are we not allowed to cuss on here? We, listen, listen uh, here, Mr. Dump Button. I, that's my fault. Captain Dump Button. Now you. Now we have to take a break. All right. Now we have to take a break. That's right. I think I've got one more beer underneath this front seat. This guy just dump buttoned me. <laughs> that guy made such a great point that I never thought. Da! That was my... <laughs> Call you Captain Dump Button over there. I got skills, yo. <laughs> you do have skills. <laughs> You, I called. You can drop that bomb like nobody's business. I called Peter. Uh, I am very well behaved today. I will go on record as saying that and because Steve, I am a <laughs> hooker. I <laughs> talking sometimes, and I was just like, I've made sailors blushes and women spit take because it comes to the point where when <laughs> when we watch movies together, I will look at him and he'll just like smug and just. Wait and he was just it. like, but wait, what's coming? I said, just you know, I don't even, I don't even form sentences with him. I just literally, I literally had Tourette's where I just go, bah, 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 bah. and it is gorgeous. <laughs> wait for it, oh. and then it happens, and you're like, you son of a gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But it's it's the same with like with the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot. I, I said, look, just watch it with me. I was and just it, like, I enjoyed it with my daughter. She was like five years old when it first came out. Dude to dude, you know, it's not a great movie, but let's watch it together. Uh, and the first time you were just like, oh, this is great. And about halfway through, this is, this is a turd. I can't watch this sucks. anymore, Steve. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I'm like, grab his hand. I was like, you can do this. No. And the best, and the best part, the best part was I told him I thought it was a turd, and then he sends me a text. He's like, yeah, my daughter thought that, but she didn't want to tell me. Because yeah, she, she didn't. She didn't run it because I was a. She you know, I'm the Robert Englund freak from the A, and you know, I took her to that and. You know, <laughs> thank God she's into sci-fi movies and wants to become a nurse instead of a serial killer. So, that's, you know, because she's into bloody positive. cool. Positive. Yeah, she's, a, yeah. Positive? It's the less shitty end of the turd. But they, that was so, he, but he sent me that message, like, yeah, my daughter agrees with you. She's five years old and thought it was poop. <laughs> and I'm like. Well, she was also the one that said that Meat Loaf's Paradise by the Dashboard Light was a Walmart Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wrong. That's hard. <laughs> that's, that, that cut me to the bone because I'm like, I remember Drunken Nights at the bowling alley singing that song. And, and I'm just like, now it ruins it for me. Yeah. Not the case anymore. Uh, it's just, I told him, I said, I'm going to ruin Face Off for him too at one point where he thinks it's a great movie. I'm like, no, it's not a great movie. All right. What do you got? Well, before we, before we switch to horror, <laughs> before we switch to horror, I really want to finish this DC Marvel. Sure. Yes. Just because... With with the separation, the generational separation, I, I really 
I want to finish getting your take on what's good and what's bad. Mm. And I, you've given us you, you've given us some really yeah. good points so far, but I want to dive just a little bit deeper into what you're looking for, and it doesn't have to be Marvel or DC, or you can just go ahead and call one of them out. Yeah. What do you want to see them do mm. to bring you in to help get more of the backstory of the characters that we grew up loving? Right. So, just like the rest of you guys, way, way deeper into DC than uh, Marvel. It's just something about like their artwork and the colors, the vibrant, strong, bold colors, and then the way they tell their stories. They just like they manage to have a dark feel, but they add comedy into it that's not like over the top most times. Right, and uh, sorry for yeah. interrupting, but a lot of times with the DC villains, I've noticed there's a fall from grace for all the villains. Yes. Doctor Octopus was a well-known, renowned scientist. After his wife died, yeah. uh, Osborne, head of Oscorp Corporations, he was the well, Donald it's, Trump. That's Marvel. Man. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. But I'm just yeah. like in that universe, they're all grounded in reality that where they become supervillains. Whereas DC, you have Zod, you have Dark Side, you have uh, uh, what was it, Abomination from the you know the yeah. and uh, in, in the Incredible Hulk movie, you know that where it kind of switches off where it's you know Victor Blosky is the the human at the beginning, but then gets the genetic treatment and becomes the Incredible you know, abomination guy. But it was like, yeah, like I said, it's always more grounded in reality and a fall from grace when it comes to the, like, the DC villains versus uh, the, v, you know, the Marvel villains, where they're always an alien. It's always a threat from another planet. Yeah, it's, that's a, that is a really good point. point. Because really you gotta remember, point. when those came out, it was, point. you know, Nazi Germany was still in everybody's head. Right. Everybody, you know, the Red Skull in the Marvel movies was was just like the personification of Hitler. That's why yeah, they didn't yeah. give him the face. That's why, yeah. you know, there wasn't a face for that. And it was just like when the X-Men came out, that was about equality. That was about racism. That was, that was, that was, yeah. a, that was about pe not accepting immigrants into the country. That, you know, everybody was different, but under the same umbrella of the melting pot of America. Whereas DC was just like... We're gonna have rich guys who can't cut it as rich guys anymore, so they want to take it out on everybody. Yeah, and this dude's a fucking psychopath. <laughs> Don't deal with that. <laughs> right. So Lex <laughs> Luthor, like I said, I'm Hunter Octavius. Dive it right in. Uh, um, but you're talking Marvel, though. What? No, but what I'm saying is, those are the guys that, like I said, high up, down low. Whereas, like DC. You see those guys come into the fact they're just full blown psychopaths from the they're get go. Just, from the yeah, they're just weird. Right. Guys. Whereas there's no, yeah. con you know, somewhat of the Red Hood with the Joker, depending on what story you want to follow, or or even Harvey Dent. But yeah. he had such a tortured childhood, and what they went through with that, with the abuse DC, and everything. DC maybe tends to go with the humanity part, where Marvel goes with the hero. That's a good point. Somebody Art? should have made that. Up. Yeah. 20, minutes. 20 minutes. Actually, I, I think no, no, I read somewhere on the internet um, the, the way I like to see it is Marvel has like uh, regular people who they get powers and then they have to live uh, as regular people with these godlike powers. They have to adjust. Mm -hmm. And DC is just like these godlike people who just try to live like people, like yeah. regular people. And I think they're the giants among the ants. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's nice to have both sides of that, um, regardless of how far back the comics go, uh, or stories or movies, it's just, I feel like sometimes, most times that's the common thing. I don't know, you guys correct me if you think you... No, I like where you're going. I'm actually so you agreeing with you. Yeah. Um, Keep it going. <coughs> so, I'm actually agreeing with you. Like, I, I really don't care um, when, when it comes to superheroes. I don't care when the time period is, like, actually... Except for like the Adam West Batman, anything that's like that far back, it's just like too campy, uh, too cheesy. I I'm not a, a fan of that because as a child, I'm sure you guys have understood the same thing. As a child, you're made fun of for liking superheroes. It's it was not acceptable. But almost. from a comic book come to life on the screen, yeah. 
just the rogues gallery of the villains that you got. Hell, I own the Batman movie at home. It's got Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Joker, Penguin, Doctor Freeze. Riddler. It's literally ten villains in one movie. You know, some might only have two minutes worth of screen time, but at least you get to see them mm -hmm. in three dimensional instead of on, yeah. on paper. Yes. And and for me, honestly, I mean. OP Batman is my Batman, because because <laughs> because I grew up because he's awesome with that. So I'm Adam West all the way because that was my introduction to everything. I fell in love with you know that Joker, that Penguin, that Riddler. I'm not opposed to where everything has gone to now, but when it comes to if somebody asks me hands down what I go with. I, Batman 66 is where you go yeah. with that. Just because of the generational differences. But, however, I have read and a really good tweet that I saw yesterday was why is everybody trying to make Batman so plausible? Why can't we just make him cool? Well, everyone... OP Batman was cool. He had the swag. He had everything going for him. And then they turned him hard. And then they made him mad. And then they made him angry for the movies. Right. Well, and you also got to remember, Batman 66 was the culture of the time. You couldn't have a primetime TV show where an orphan who saw his parents shot in an alleyway and he grows up to be a, a vigilante of the streets yeah. of Gotham. You know, while they're watching Green Acres and a talking pig. It's very true. You know, it, it's, very true. You know, it's, so it's just like <laughs> you, you're, 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 you're kind of a answer. symptom of the universe of what you grow up in. That is a great perspective, <laughs> man. So it's just like you know, you don't want to you don't want to insult the audience, but like I said, it was still kind of a niche to be a comic book a comic book fan back then, right? Because you had also you know. It was still, you know, people still listen to stuff on the radio. The Green Hornet, Phantom. the Shadow, the Phantom. The Phantom, yeah. Um, just, you know, and some of the, the stuff Ooh. like that. And it's just like Batman got the kids in there and was still nostalgic enough for, you know, you know, if they were K's age or our age or whatever, be like, oh, I remember listening to that on the radio with my dad. You know, there were serials in the movies that they played, you know, before you got to actually see the movies itself. They played like a little 10-minute snippet of Batman and Robin. And it was just like, now you can connect with your children over stuff that, you know, That's might... That's a really metal point. Yeah, where it's like you can't, you know, normally, you know, it's a good jumping off point. And that's what started with me and my daughter with the horror movies. It started with A Nightmare on Elm Street, and it built up from there, where it was just like, now we're in a society where if you're sitting there watching a movie and if a girl takes her blouse off, you'll cover her eyes. But, hey, let's disembowel her and hang her up let's by her ears. Hey, let's make her cool. Look at that. And I'm just like, okay, you know, what are you trying to do? What's going on here? <laughs> That is, yeah. so, that is so that great. Is such a good point. That is a damn good point. But, oh. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, that just for we, me is a whole different ball game. Oh, my do you do you like horror movies? Or? No, uh, I like horror movies, but I get what you're saying. Like, we let these little kids think that the human body, which is, everyone has a human body, it's just skin. Yeah. Like that is. I mean, I understand that it was over sexualized for a long time. And and you know what? And the whole thing of it is, nudity is real. This. Serial killers are not to these people. You know, pe parents don't want to confront everything that's real. They it would be rather to you know to just push it off as just like there's a serial killer killing babysitters in Haddonfield, I Illinois. I want to watch that movie. Then, then, <laughs> then versus you know you know kids having I sex and it was just like. Yeah. And that's what, why Scream was so brilliant, because it made fun of itself, but it was totally still did. a great movie yeah. and a scary movie at the yeah. same time. They, they called but, all the shots while they were doing yeah, it. Yeah, because you yeah. know what? If they didn't, we would have. If we are sitting in there being just like, you know, don't go, you know, you don't go outside. Don't you don't go have to the space. Basement. They've been telling us that for 30 years in the horror movies, <laughs> that you don't go in the basement and investigate the, you know, the, the noise. And, you know, don't go out and have sex. Don't do drugs. Don't do this. <laughs> And you know what? It was just like I'm not gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe. It's the whole Beverly Hills Cop. It, it's it's the whole thing. It was just like if you come out and be like, "Hey, this is what we're doing. We're poking fun at ourselves, but we're still gonna make an entertaining movie from a guy who made 
awesome horror movies in the 70s and 80s. I'm yeah. telling you, go watch The Hills Have Eyes. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, go yes. watch The Last House on the Left, the Last original House on the left. left. And you yeah. tell me that those aren't renegade Dude. filmmaking, uh, what, Grindhouse, before Tarantino made it a cool term. That was, just that was Rodriguez. Fantastic movie. And it was just like... That was Rodriguez. And yeah. It was Tarantino as well. And, well, Grindhouse was... And he did Death Proof. Oh, Death Proof, or, no, Tarantino, Tarantino did, did Death Proof, and then he did Rodriguez Plane. did Grindhouse. Ro well, no, it was called The Grindhouse, and then the two movies, because he did Death Proof, and then it was Planet uh, Terror. Planet was Terror. Was Rodriguez I'm sorry. Was I'm sorry. Planet That's Terror. all right. Planet Terror. But R Rodriguez, he's got horror roots, too, and cool shit. When it Sin comes City. Sin City, he's got uh, From Dust Till Dawn, he's got... Um, I mean, even Spy Kids, he can go jump generations. Sylvester Stallone was a villain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and George Lopez for George Lopez. lugging on the oh, screen for right. 45 minutes. Oh, I'm like, holy balls. How many, how many really C-list celebrities are you going to shove in this movie it's so and great. still make it entertaining? It, but that's yeah. the whole point. Is like, It goes back to the entertainment factor. It goes back to the storytelling. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's the end. This is hard. It's hard trying to figure out where they went wrong in storytelling. But and here's the he's, thing: he's, and he's, he's he's got some. Go ahead. I, I the, the, where they went wrong is just they started pandering to different people. Like, if you want to include a specific audience, you have specific characters for that audience, or you can make a completely original character. They just, they disrespect all of us when they pander to specific people with specific characters and then you change up everything. Mm -hmm. Now, not only is the source material this gone. This is younger generation yeah. speaking right yeah. to you. Do you hear this? I hear this. Wait. This is awesome. I'm loving this. Now, now, not only is the source material disrespected, I as the viewer am disrespected. And and now we just have these these, these movies that some work. And then some don't, and now none of us are really the the the, the companies are happy, the viewers are happy, and and now because it's messed up, now we can't get another chance to see a movie or a character or an idea being put on the screen uh, that we really wanted to see come to fruition. So like that's just that's how I feel about the whole situation. Well, and just, you know what, that's an that's, awesome and that's point. That's perfect because Steve, Steve and I, I'm sorry, no, that's that's just, Steve and I have that's talked what about we have been talking about the, the whole time, like since day one that we've started this channel. This is what the problem has been, and this is what we're trying to get to. And we finally have and, a and, young and, generation, and he hit it right on the nose. It, it's it. insulting in a horror movie. Because anybody can sit there in a quiet theater, and I could scream at the top of my lungs and scare the bejesus out of three of you. Oh, congratulations, you have a nervous system. It's not scary, it's a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Scary is watching Michael Myers slowly stalk you from across the street as she's trying to get it back into the house. That's scary. And it plays with your mind. And it plays and with your mind. Yeah. Because what's in your mind is more horrifying than anything you could see you on screen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what we keep circling around to. And you just said it. If there are plenty of good writers still out there. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not giving us the good stories. They're not coming through. They're not giving us the new characters. Mm -hmm. They're not they're not finishing what somebody else had started. They just let it stop. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of things out there where they could have continued. Yeah. And with proper writing and maybe one or two new characters added in. Finish a story, and that whole subgenre of the torture porn, the Eli Roth, the Hostel, well, the, movies, the, yeah. hostel movie, the Human Centipede movies, oh, yeah. the just the the gore for the sake of gore. Right. Whereas Silence of the Lambs was just such a great character study, where it built up the tension of what you know. I'm sorry, where he wears that dude's face in the ambulance and sits up straight is still one of my like top five horrifying things that I'm just like I can't believe that happened. Yeah. But like I said, that's more of a thing where it's just like it slowly ratchets up the tension of what he's doing rather than just somebody... Giving you something that you already expect. The, exactly. Yeah. Like Go the back to the Texas like the Chainsaw Tor Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The original one. Him. Hardly a drop of blood in that movie. Yeah. But, you know, these guys could exist. Right. You know, a house the, in the middle of Texas. Hills have, the Hills Have Eyes. Exactly. All of those films do the same thing. <clears throat> they try, or no, they give... 
you the you mentioned torture porn gore stuff like that right there are films that are like that we watched a couple you uh, did alive like those films give you those types of things it's fine when you sit with your buddy and you laugh and you have a good joke and you whatever but when you watch film to watch a film the most terrorizing in Silence of the Lambs is a great one. Yeah, that thing. It's for that. that up. It's that's that really silent, thing. like that building, like oh my goodness. You know why? This is a bad He's news, human. man. human. This is the Jason Voorhees could, is a guy who can catch a, a running teenager from two miles away. Mm -hmm. Freddy yeah. Krueger kills kids in their sleep. Mm -hmm. Hannibal Lecter was a doctor a and guy. a psychiatrist and a, a regular guy who that's would just. Obtained a taste for human flesh. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for lack of a better term, they were back backwoods rednecks, but they were cannibals. You know, that's something that, you know, and even like The Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes, that spoke to a lot of the things of just like the nuclear testing that they did back in the, you know, in the days of New Mexico. That's where The Hills Have Eyes came out of. And it was just like the Good whole point. the whole rape yeah. culture of the you know the feminist movement coming up and about how that know, is that's a yeah. great and it was just like Wes Craven did so many great things about which you know he evolved and adapted with every decade he was in when he did those two movies in the seventies and then uh, Nightmare on Elm Street you know he came across with something random where it was just he was talking to a family member where he, he was just like a guy died in his sleep because of you know and he he went from there and then he went on to do other things uh like the serpent and the rainbow and deadly oh, I, deadly friend and just stuff that was out of his wheelhouse but i'm like you know what i'm gonna make a movie about a killer robot that comes back to life and somehow manifests inside of a teenage girl and it kills her boyfriend at the because, end of the movie. Because you know what? It's Wes Craven, and everybody back then was plunking down their three seventy five to go see it. What's, what's important? To, what's important to note is that horror, true horror movies, are social commentary. Yep. They are true social commentary. Uh, Dawn of the Dead is a classic example of consumerism, and everybody flocks to the malls. It doesn't matter that they're right. mindless they, zombies. Yeah. They die their the first mall. thing is, and like they said in the movie, that's their instinct. That's what they we're going to go it's, there. As long when you when you watch films like that, it's important to notice that that's what they're trying to tell. They're telling a story, and and you can take zombies or you can make it whatever. I don't care what it is. You know, puppets, whatever it is. It's a commentary on human society. So how you view that really makes a big difference on how you view the film. Yeah, yeah. like what we were talking about Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers is like, a great example. Because it's just like science fiction movie about, you know, aliens, bugs that come from another let's planet. Let's bring in space Nazis. And let's bring in space Nazis and have Doogie Howser yeah, as the Yeah, let's make Doogie Howser be the most <laughs> Hitler-esque person in yep. the world. And have Michael Ironside just get bitten in half. And have his arm ripped off. <laughs> But that's you're exactly right because it's simply social commentary. The the more grittier, gorier, uh, uh, slanderous, bad the film gets, the more open it is to social commentary. And as long as you get that when you view a film, right? It's like watching a John Waters film. Yeah. Or it's like when I watched Seven for the first time. Seven's I walked another. out of the theater saying, I feel guilty about enjoying that movie. Because I'm just like, that was just like such, you know, before it's The Departed, so dark, before the Departed yeah. came out, that was like the biggest bummer of an ending yeah. where I'm just like, no, I, I, it, what, that, what, does that say, what does that say about I'm me here. as a person if I enjoyed that movie? <laughs> it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. But you sit there and you're like, Okay, but then you know I also paid to watch the Jerky Boys that year, so I I can't hang my my flag up for being a critic too much because it was just like I paid money to go see that. This is all new territory. That's all right. You can Google it after we're done. It's, it, it was actually a good solid point there. You've good. never seen Seven? I have not. Oh, I have not. I would cut as as a friend. Don't. It's hard. It's not a good movie. Huh. It is bad. There are bad things that happen. 
I'm not even talking outside of like movie content. Like this is just like, ugh. I'll take your word for it. That's good yeah. enough for me, man. If, if, if it shouldn't be watched, it shouldn't be watched. It's. it's I mean, but you know, you, you can't do that to the boy because <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> How can you be walking through this? Like, what, what if somebody comes up to him and would be like, you know, he's sitting there eating dinner and be like, what's in the box? And Kay's going to Oh, you didn't pull out the box. And he's just like, what is it? And then they're going to ridicule this poor man, and I can't I can't stand for that. It, it, but it's like... It's Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, and... Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Gwyneth, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, at their best. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was at their prime. The yeah. best. And but, yeah, that was like Brad Pitt, pretty boy... Decided awesome. to do Dark and, Boys at Twelve and Monkeys, awesome. yeah. and you know where he and decided awesome. to become a serious, uh, serious actor. But dude, that that twist was just like Harry. K yeah. <laughs> so here you have it. Seven <laughs> is out there. Um, you can stream it. I'm sure it's can, on one. You of You can not watch it, or you should watch have it. Have a friend. Yeah. Have a friend. <laughs> take a friend, man. Oh, yeah, it's I bad. Got it. I'll watch it with my sister. However. Apparently, it needs to not be watched. Well, here's the one thing, and I'll put my and I'll put my foot down for this every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Don't watch Rob Zombie movies, uh, just because. Well, they're bad. They're directed. They're, here's yeah. the thing: they are insulting. They are they're poorly made, directed. and they're just awful. And it's just like he uses the same people in every single movie. They don't add any character development or anything, except for Otis, maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I maybe. May, I, oh. I, I, that's a strong maybe. But he feels the needs to throw rednecks in every single movie because they're fun to kill, like nonsense. Well, but here's the thing: when he redid right, Halloween, that's easy. But when he redid <laughs> Halloween, he took everything that was great about the original movie: the lack of gore, no backstory. What, what's more horrifying than not a, than a kid who just snaps one day and kills and kills his sister? Knows. Then if you see him torturing hamsters and kills his stepfather on the, on the recliner chair, no, it's more horrifying, just like uh, 8mm with Nicolas Cage, where it was just like Gandolfini movie. came up to him and be like, you want to know what happened to me? Nothing. That's I, a, just, I just I happen to be this way. That's a And that's more terrifying than anything to try to do a psychological study of why this kid is the way he is. 8mm yeah. is the same as 7. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those films where... It's, yeah, it's parallel. Almost. It just... Yeah crushes you like yeah you, you you finish watching that film and regardless of how you feel about the characters and what they're going through those are the types of film that you watch after you're done yeah i struggled you just yeah, like struggled through it yeah oh my god those poor people yeah like, fuck. like a serious <laughs> sense of realism no, uh, not just like a bleak vision of what a bleak could, vision and of it's just like that, and it's terrifying that it's just like on the dark web these cats are out there the, uh, there and you know what I mean it was just like you okay. think in the in the basement of some abandoned factory there are some dudes selling snuff films it's out there we don't know it because we've never perused those things yeah. but it's just like somebody made a movie about it so somebody told somebody and then somebody else told somebody else. Yeah, that these things are out there. Th those films were, for me, psychologically, and I'm talking, like, you watch a film and you enjoy it for content and you have fun and good stuff. There are films out there. There's another one, I, I want to say it was called the, the Forest or The Tree. It had Hugh Jackman. It was like a surreal Ingmar Bergman kind I'm, of flavor. I'm not it. sure. I'm not sure. But there are certain films that you can watch, and after you're done, and you're tired, <laughs> like this, like it, you, it, you're just physically, it just it felt took, like a punch in the gut. It just took everything out of you, mm -hmm. and like, why the did I watch this film? Yeah. And then you can flip there and put on the Evil Dead movies from the '80s, and just sit Let's there and be like, I'm propping my legs up. Let's go Let's, zombies with a lawnmower, well, yep. and we're good. Yep. Do whatever you have to do. Yeah. You know, that, that's what's so great about that medium. That's what's so great about that storytelling. Yeah. 